So now I'd like to welcome Sophia Ayardi. She is the winner of the recent Sigma 60th Anniversary Scholar Competition in the Honor Filmmaking category. Congratulations. Sophia is a student at California State University Northridge with a major in film production. Before we get started in this interview, let's take a look at Sophia's winning piece. How many years of your life have you been dedicated to? Uh, 53. <laughs> if I had to describe what it is, I would say it's a way of life. You know, there's a lot of me in them, you know, and some of me, some of them, there are decades of me in them. We could walk out there and look at a tree and I can probably tell you a story about every single one of them. So, yeah, they all have a story. So I, I, I you know, it's kind of a, a relationship with the tree where you kind of both have to have respect for each other. The Japanese kind of turned it into their own thing and transformed it into their own art form. Most traditional Japanese styling, um, you're always kind of looking towards the future and replacing something old with something new. So um, you're sustaining the tree as you go along. Um, there's pots, trees that have been in pots in Japan for over a thousand years. Um, if you get them, if you start doing it, you start growing them, Planning up, plan on you know your great grandkids being able to put their hands on them. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about let's talk about this winning piece specifically um, in the honor category. So I think honor was a difficult one um, for anybody to to try and work around. So kind of what. What brought you towards honor as your subject? And then specifically with honor, kind of what brought you towards uh, these bonsai trees and this man as your subject? Um, yeah, so I, once I heard about the competition, I really wanted to see what I had around me that could fit in one of those categories. And bonsai trees, I knew there was like a place nearby that would um, nurture like a nursery for bonsai trees. And, I didn't know much about bonsai trees, but all my life I was always like curious about learning more. And that's actually like my general approach to filmmaking. Like I really try to find something that I don't know much about. And then through filmmaking and through research is like the way I learn about it. Um, and so I have to say first, um, I went in with the idea of talking about the precision category because I felt like bonsai had a very precise way to do things. So I was like, it, fit, it fits perfectly. But when I started making the interview, I realized that honor was a bit uh, like a better way to describe it. Um, and actually I talked to the person about precision and he, he said um, like, it's not precision that's important. It's, it goes beyond that. So that's where I realized like the way he, um, sees bonsai and the way his life is um, influenced by the bonsai trees and the many years he has um, been part of bonsai it's like honor was the best way to describe it I think that sounds I think that sounds on point and uh, it speaks to being able to adapt right that's you go in with one notion and you realize like maybe that's not, that's not the best one. So just talking about like the scholarship in general, I'm kind of curious, like how did you find the scholarship? Is there anything particular about it that made you want to enter? Like, was it the categories specifically um, that, that like inspired you? Um, I would say, I mean, I found about it through a fellowship that I was part of um, with Black Magic Collective and they um, showed me this scholarship. And with that fellowship as well, I had gone to, like I, there was a day where we learned a bit about Sigma and what they do. So um, I initially built that connection with Sigma um, and I realized like the type of company it was. So then when this came out, it was really my opportunity to know more, to connect more with um, um, people at Sigma and like build that connection. And yeah, I found it really interesting how um, the formatting of the, 
of this um, competition, it was making a photo or a video. It wasn't like, it's usually a lot of essays or a lot of, I don't know, um, a lot of things to write. And I realized like with this, um, a one minute video, it was like perfect to just make this experiment of telling like a whole story in that one minute and being able to capture, like it, it really interested me, like being able to capture this concept in just one minute. Um, and it's like, um, free, you know, like you only have this concept, but apart from that, you can interpret it in any way you want. So I think that's one of the things that really attracted me to like this competition. So then speaking about the, the actual execution, the filmmaking of the piece, um, do you remember which lens you were, you were working with? Um, I believe I had um, the, the 24 and the, um, and the 85. Uh, okay, so then we can talk about, um, so the 85 that you used uh, on the film, because I noticed watching it, they, they have some of these like really beautiful close-up shots. Um, and so I was just, just curious about the actual execution of the film, the filmmaking itself. Like what were your thoughts going in? You know, obviously it's, I need to capture this subject in this image, but, but what's, what's further than that? Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's, um, I went in alone to this bonsai place. And so it was really uh, trying to balance um, like hearing their story and being able to like really enjoy because it's just one minute video but all the footage I got it's so much information and so much passion that is put into it um, and I interviewed more people apart from him so it was I, I just got so um, like um, it was a, a surprise to see how beautiful the art was so I was trying at the same time like deal with my emotions of like, wow, this is amazing. And at the same time I'm filming um, and it's like the lenses are um, a bit, you know, they're, they're heavy. They're, they're like, a, they're very, they're very nice lessons. And so you're able to find that balance with the camera, like the weight itself, like it helps out with that stabilizing. Um, but yeah, it was like um, trying to like, also like having to be changing lenses depending on like what the emotion was telling me, like what I thought would be the best option. And yeah, it like, it was, it was nice using those lenses with um, different, different areas of what I wanted to capture. So then uh, now let's go back to, you know, your younger self, when you first realized that you wanted to go the filmmaking route, was there anything in particular that was like a trigger that set you off or is it maybe something that's built up over time a specific film or director that inspired you like what what kind of started that path of like you know what i'm gonna be i'm gonna work in filmmaking yeah um <clears throat> my start with filmmaking i pinpointed at the time where i was around i would say 13 from 10 to 13, that age, um, my sister had gotten a camera as a birthday gift. And so I just felt that need to play around with, like with, to grab it and play around with it. And sometimes my sister wouldn't um, uh, lend it to me or, you know, it was like that um, prohibited thing that, oh my God, a camera, you know? And also one of the things I enjoyed about the camera was that it, it's like um, you capture that memory. I've always had like this, a bit of a bad memory myself. And so I saw the camera as a way to relieve, relive those memories for forever, you know? So it's this idea of permanency in things that are temporary that I just, I fell in love with it. And like one of my like early days, what I would do is I would, um, like capture my family, like take videos of my family. And I remember my family being very mad at me, like, because I would be like capturing them in their like worst moments. Mm. They would get mad at me, Sophia, where are you filming? Sophia, I'm just cooking, just let me be, you know? And then I would grab those videos, um, edited, edited them. And then I would show them back. I would show them themselves in the screen, but now with a story. And they would be like, wow, this is so nice. When are you gonna do another one, you know? So I realized the power of, 
of storytelling and the power of creating the story with just elements that you have that you capture from the world. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the main points. And then it became um, like, uh, you know, I, I was in love with this and I was in Mexico at the moment. So when it like when I was in high school, I when I started like to have to make a decision of what to study, it was when I realized, like, I mean, I know I like this, but can I, you know, can I make it a lifestyle? Can I make it a, a degree? Because um, in Mexico, it's not a lot of there's not a lot of film schools. There's not a lot of um, classes related to film. Um, but, you know, my some of my classmates started talking about like they wanted filmmaking. And I, that's where I realized like I could actually make it a career. I could make it something that, um, yeah, that I that I work with, that I study it and stuff like that. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think, I think one of the hardest things too is that almost anybody could just film a collection of scenes, right? It's, it's the connections between them. It's what you're saying, it's that storytelling. That's what makes you a filmmaker. Um, so it's interesting to hear that like really early on and at least from this conversation so far, it sounds like you lean towards documentary filmmaking. Um, is that kind of something that you think that you're gonna be, you're gonna continue to go towards? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I do realize that most of like my initial approach to filmmaking was that, that like realism documentary, just life, how it is, um, just capturing it. Um, and I am very interested in it. And what I really like as well, a particular like subject in film or like um, genre in film that I like is um, documentary fiction, I think it's the term you know, where it's like, it's still a fiction, but it feels like a documentary. And I also enjoy having like, um, like real people play um, their their own self, you know, and we like making it as a bit of realistic as possible, like making it feel very truthful, very real. Um, but yeah, documentary, it's definitely something that I'm very interested in. Yeah, it feels very, um and now I'm going to attempt to pull out my film school knowledge. I'm going to say Lynn Ramsey, who uh, her style of filmmaking, it's, it's very similar to like realism, but it's fictional. Um, but you would absolutely believe that these are real people in a real situation and someone just happened to have a camera to like capture all of it. Um, but no, I think that's, I think that sounds like a really interesting, you know, it's, it's, you never want to pigeonhole yourself, um, but it's good to know like where your, your skills of course can lie. Let's talk then about your motivation. So what is that factor that has you like get up and go? I think we've all had those moments where we hit a rough patch and you just think like, I've, I'm never gonna think of anything new. I'm never gonna create anything new. It's, I've done everything I'll ever do. Um, but I think that's when we, we have to pull on, on both inspiration and motivation. So I'm kind of curious where your mind goes uh, when you have those type of moments. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I have been like, I feel like at the same time, I have been blessed and um, tortured. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed, um, cursed exactly. <laughs> I think I have been at the same time blessed and cursed with this um, like art, pa like passion towards art. Um, because at the same time, it's so beautiful to have this, to have this interest in, in art and making art part of your life. But at the same time, it takes a lot of time. And sometimes it's difficult to go back to that um, initial moment of, of pureness of art um, and like really taking, because it takes sometimes a bit of time for me to return to the, to the moments that I appreciate as an artist um, in order to find that inspiration. And Sometimes with the lifestyle, you know, with the stresses of everyday life, you forget of that like, um, like initial layer of who you are as a person and the initial like reasons why you started making art. So I would say, you know, um, it's that's where I find my motivation from because it's it's like part of me. It's like what um, what keeps me grounded what makes me feel human in a sense what gives me purpose as well is having that art um knowledge and that art um you know uh, passion in a sense and that love for art 
Um, and yeah, like I, I see it as something that gives me meaning, that gives me answers to the world. Um, in in a world like such a crazy world, um, like art and specifically filmmaking is what I'm holding on to in order to understand it, in order to um, like travel around this this world, you know. Um, yeah, I would say I would say that's it. <laughs> so. Part of that passion, part of uh, growing as a filmmaker is wanting to take on a degree in filmmaking is to officially become uh, a filmmaking student. So let's talk about how you decided to make that transition to officially go into college and university. So yeah, um, my path towards um, having that degree in filmmaking, well, it started as, you know, telling my mother, um, like being a bit afraid of telling my mother, hey, I want to study film. Um, and then having the reaction of my mother be like of total support of like, yes, you know, if that's your passion, go for it. Um, that really allowed me to be like, yes, I can do it. I have that support. And, you know, I, I studied here at, um, I'm still studying here at CSUN. And so far it has been a very good experience. I really enjoy um, uh, like all learning about learning about film I really enjoy um, that like being able to have that knowledge and also collaborating with more students and I think that's one of the most important parts of it also like um, being in this place where like next to you you have people that are as passionate and as interested as film in film as you are so it really allows for that art to continue and, you know, you find that support in, in college and that, um, like that even like protection of like, um, you know, you're here to learn. There's people that also share this with you and, you know, it's something possible. Um, and yeah, like you start also connecting with the professors and looking at their lifestyles and how they were inspired by film. And you realize, um, like at that moment, it was when I realized like it's it's out there. I'm not the only crazy person just in, like so in love with this filmmaking art. There's professors that have also all their lives been amazed by it. So that that connection that you build um, in this like in in this strange world in college, you find that um, connection with people and that people that share that same interest and that really pushes you forward. I would say. So, do you have any advice then for for? high school students that are now considering going into film school is there anything that you wish maybe someone had told you beforehand or, or just help you kind of take that one step forward yeah i would say um you know a lot of people are like really doubt going into one of these like art majors you know filmmaking or, or whatever it is um, because there's a general like i would say negative idea you know the art life or whatever but you know if it's really your passion it's you you gotta go for it and it's gonna take a lot of effort but you know every single career every single career choice or career like major you have to put all your effort so why not put all your effort in something that you actually like that you actually enjoy and yeah I would say um really like a, a an advice more specifically would be try to connect with a lot of people try to meet um, and try to be part of like every single experience or opportunity. Sometimes, um, you know, there's an event or an expo or something that, you know, you don't know who you're going to meet there or you don't know what you're going to learn that you're, you're going to learn there. So it becomes that like um, snowball effect of, you know, you go to this little event and you meet this person and this person connects you to this event and this event connects you to this group of people, you know, and little by little without you realizing um, those little steps that you've been taking lead you to your goals. Um, even if it sometimes feels like you're so far away from them, uh, it's like little by little you start approaching them. In my junior, my junior year of college, I applied to this internship called the Academy Gold Rising Internship, that it's like with the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. And this internship I got, I... I was, um, I knew about this internship through professors and, you know, I asked for help from my fellow student and my fellow classmates and professors as well to really help me 
make this resume and cover letter as good as possible because I really saw this internship as something really important to me and something that I really like. And I was lucky enough to be accepted to this program. And I was in that program in the summer of 2021. And I really learned a lot. I was able to make a lot of connections, um, get to know a lot of people, students, and just interested in filmmaking. And it really um, like built myself as a, as a director, as a filmmaker in general, um, both in a physical um, way of like really like theory of that knowledge, but also like in the mentality that you have of, you know, you get to meet such important people and you have them in front of you and you realize like their stories and you realize like just as them, it took hard work, but it's hard work that I can do and I'm able to do this, you know, so it really opens you up for the possibility um, of like, there's really um, a lot of opportunities for you to get to that place, you know, regardless of your background or, or where you come from. Um, and also thanks to that internship, I should mention, I was able to, they brought me back for this um, year's Oscars. I was um, a trophy presenter, which means I was taking the Oscar um, on stage to the presenters for the presenters to give to the winner. So I, I had this like immensely beautiful experience of being there, um, of something that I saw maybe further on the line, you know, going to the Oscars. But all of a sudden, um, thanks to this internship, I was able to be there and, you know, it was all through, through applying to that internship and through like getting good group, like really um, focusing in school and really um, appreciating that love in, from knowledge in, in college, you know, it's, it's a small step that could take you like um, exponentially far. So I think um, it's a, an experience I'm very grateful for and I'm really excited for what's next. No, I mean, it, it definitely sounds like you're on the right track. I feel like I've heard very similar uh, advice from working professionals now. I mean, a big aspect of it is, is who you know, who you meet, um, who wants to work with you. Um, so, so now that we have talked about where you've been, <laughs> where you are, let's talk about where you're going, or at least where you see yourself, whether it is in just like, just right after graduation, or if you already say, listen, I've got my dream, you know, 20 years down the line, I'm going to be this. Um, is there anything in particular that you see for yourself, you know, coming, coming out of college? Yeah, um, that's like the question that has been going on my mind um, of what to do after college. That's like the million dollar question. Um, and I think what I would do, like my, the way I see myself in the future is directing, um, like as a director. And, you know, I, I realized that that's, that's my passion because every time I'm doing it, just time freezes and it just flows. And after it, it just feels like I came back from a dream. And that's, that's how I realized, like, this is actually what I want. This is um, really what I have the love for. So I really want to continue in that directing path. And I want to keep making um, short films and maybe starting to write or put together like a feature film for later on. And I would also want to like further my education with like graduate school and keep keep learning about it. I would, I'm like a big, um, like um, I really, um, like I agree with the statement that you never stop being a student. Like you're always keep, you have always have to keep learning um, even if you're out of college. And also um, I would like to like keep learning from every single area of filmmaking. Um, like even if I want to go specifically towards directing, I'm always so open to learning from, from every single aspect, from sound, from cinematography or production design, anything. And so, yeah, I like, that's how I see myself like going towards directing um, as the main goal, but, you know, in the way, like towards my, towards that path, learning from every single thing that I can. Um, yeah. 
Well, like I said, I think uh, I think you're definitely on the right track. I feel like everything that you talk about, I've heard I've heard working professionals talk about. So uh, I think you're going to get exactly where you want to go. And I'm 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 very excited, especially for all the scholarship winners. But I'm very excited to see um, where you guys end up. I think it's going to be a blast to watch. Sophia, thank you so much for participating in the Sigma 60th anniversary contest. And we hope that the scholarship winnings will help you along your way. And we hope that your generation can continue to encourage and inspire filmmakers for years to come. It's an art form that we at Sigma are of course very attached to, but we hope it'll keep evolving and growing and that talented artists like yourself will keep it alive for a long time. So Sophia, if people wanna follow you on social media where it's the best place for them to find you. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Sophia Yerdi, that's S-O-F-I-A-Y-E-R-D-I. Great. So again, thank you so much for your time and thank you to everyone for watching. Please visit us at sigma-university.com or at Sigma University on Instagram.